Close our eyes and listen. I heard a robin over there. I hear the breeze blowing through this exquisite spot. What an amazing day this is today. What a great celebration that we're gonna have for everybody here. Just, just remarkable. And it's wonderful to see all of you here to celebrate all of the partners, elected officials, staff that make this happen. I'm David Cash and I'm the regional administrator at EPA for New England. I just started five weeks ago and what a gift it is for me to participate in this event. And it's a pleasure to be here in Mattapan on the banks of the Neponset River with all of you today to announce that EPA has determined that the 3.7 mile stretch of the Neponset River running through Dorchester, Milton, Hyde Park, and Mattapan has been added to the Superfund National Priorities List. Woo! Woo! It's time. Exactly. It's time. It's time. This is a win-win for the communities who value recreating on the river, families who live in the area, and the wildlife that depend on it. Because we now have a mechanism to address the contamination in the sediment that has plagued the river for decades. And EPA could not have made and taken this step without all of our partners. Thank you all for being here today. And I'll plan to thank and introduce each of our speakers throughout the program and then we'll open it up for questions for the media at the end. The Lower Neponset River site has received unwavering support at all levels, including from our senators. I know Senator Warren has been a champion of investing federal dollars in ways that reap multiple benefits for the environment, for jobs, for everyday working people and their families, and so that those dollars can be an investment in environmental justice. This project is a perfect example of wise investment, and we thank you, Senator Warren, you. for being here today. Thank you. thank you. I am so happy to be here today. You know, um, I want to start by saying that um, no one does anything good on their own, that this really has been a joint effort. And I want to thank Congressman Lynch who has been in this fight for many, many years. I want to thank Congresswoman Presley, who has brought passion and focus to getting this done. I want to thank Mayor Wu, who has made this a priority, our state and local partners for all of this exciting news. And I particularly want to thank our new EPA administrator. Uh, thank you, David Cash, and thank you for being here today. So the first step in solving any problem is to recognize that the problem exists. We're here today to acknowledge, finally, finally, that the federal government has officially recognized the dangerous pollution in the Deposit River. Today we take the first official step toward cleaning up the river and making it safe for our neighbors. Like many industrial states, Massachusetts utilized our rivers and our shores as working waterfronts. We built communities around our harbors and our riverfronts, which in turn powered our economy and created important jobs. But at the same time, that development came with the steep price of harmful pollution and contamination, and those costs were pushed onto our local communities. Residents of Milton, Dorchester, Mattapan, and Hyde Park have known for many years that PCB contamination in this part of the river is a serious health problem for their families and for families throughout the region. But knowing and actually developing a plan are two different things. It was important to get official recognition to begin to develop actual plans to clean up the river. Leaders like Kathleen and Ian and Vivian and countless others, yes, have fought so hard to make our communities safe. 
Their tireless advocacy, along with a lot of hard work at the federal, state, and local level, have brought us together today so that the EPA can finally, today, designate this stretch of the river as a Superfund site. Without them, this problem would continue to fester, putting lives at risk for generations to come. Designating the river as a Superfund site is an important first step in making the deposit clean and safe again. And this critical designation will lead to testing and eventual cleanup using federal money and federal expertise. Now, the federal government created the Superfund program specifically to clean up and make the most of contaminated sites across the country and to make them safe again. The program has played an important role in helping to clean up PCB contamination in other parts of the state, and Congress has strengthened this critical program in the recent infrastructure bill. The bipartisan infrastructure law invested $3.5 billion in environmental remediation for Superfund fights, making it one of the largest investments in American history to address the legacy of pollution that harms the public health of our communities and neighborhoods. This bill also reinstated the chemical excise tax to make sure that the Superfund program will have the funding it needs to clean up the Neponset and other sites around the country in the future. I, along with Congressman Lynch, Congresswoman Presley, and Senator Markey, are going to make sure that federal funding comes as soon as possible to make the Neponset clean and safe. So I just want to say again, thank you all for helping make this possible today. It's thanks to your efforts and your persistence that today most of the streams in the Deposit River system meet swimmable standards during dry weather and much of the river has been opened up for recreational kayaking and canoeing. And soon, one day soon, all of the Neponset River will be clean and safe again. Thank you. <laughs> we know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Senator Warren. Uh, as the senator noted, this stretch of river was home to several mills that initially used dams to generate power. And those mills and other industrial facilities were the engine of economic development in the Boston area. There's no doubt about that. But they also may have contributed to the contamination in the river sediment which is the main reason for today's determination to list the site on the national priorities list. Today's action will result in a transformation of the river, improving its ecological health and bringing big benefits to the communities that share the Neponset. I know this is especially exciting for our next two speakers, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley and Congressman Stephen Lynch. The 3.7 mile stretch of the river runs through these two congressional districts and we're thrilled to have both representatives here with us today. Let me first introduce Congresswoman Presley, whose district we stand in now. So thanks so much for hosting us today. Right, seven. Yes. <laughs> I know for her, policy is her love language. Uh -huh. And I note that because today we celebrate the policy put in place by Congress and executed by the Biden-Harris Environmental Protection Agency and our partners that aims to clean up the most polluted sites, restore ecological health, and turn challenges into assets for families, kids, and communities. What better expression for our love for the earth and love for our communities than the policy we are turning into action today? Congressman Presley. Wow. wow. Thank you, Administrator Cash. and. Um, you know, I thought it's so appropriate that you had us all be still um, where you were. OK, that you had us be still for a moment. Um, several months ago, I had the honor for the first time of organizing uh, with indigenous leaders um, who uh, often refer to themselves as uh, water protectors. And it was just uh, so reinforcing and an important reminder. You know, this is uh, restorative. It's healing. It's beautiful. Uh, it's spiritual. 
Uh, and so uh, what an incredible uh, moment. And I'm a long, uh, have long time been a believer uh, that the best uh, collaborations are those which are community driven and government endorsed. And this project uh, is so uh, uh, symbolic of that symbiotic partnership and relationship. And so uh, in the same way that uh, very apropos, Senator, that you would say uh, they persisted. You know something about that. I do. Uh, she <laughs> persisted. Um, so I do want to just give it up uh, to Kathleen and Ian and Vivian and, and uh, the many others that are here. And I was speaking with Congressman Lynch as we were uh, convening, and I was talking about just what a long haul this has been, and you know how I hope in many ways that this, um, you know, renews and restores and fortifies people people's faith, you know, in government and and, and what is possible with persistence and collaboration. And uh, we were naming all the electeds who had been a part of this uh, before, and so um, I do just want to take a moment. And I had said to her uh, earlier that this was um, a part of her legacy, and I want to acknowledge Senator Linda Dorsina Forey. Yes. yes. Representative Consalvo yes. and Fluker Oakley, <laughs> Congressman Lynch, and of course, uh, Madam Mayor Michelle Wu. Thank you for your leadership, uh, Mayor Wu, and your commitment to a Green New Deal for Boston and your pursuit of environmental justice for Boston residents. Again, it feels good to be in the seventh. I'm proud to join you all here today as the EPA announces that it will include the Lower Neponset River and the Superfund National Priorities List. This action, and this is the word du jour, will transform, will transform the river, improve its ecological health, and reduce the risk of health hazards for surrounding communities. Today's action by the EPA is the result of years of work by grassroots organizers and advocacy groups who fought for both a review and the removal of contamination from this river that runs through my district. No one should have to live, work, or go to school near a contaminated site and communities across the Massachusetts 7th and our country simply cannot afford to wait any longer for the protections that they deserve. 70% of our nation's Superfund sites are within one mile of public housing, posing serious health and reproductive risks to black, brown, and low-income communities primarily. Communities like Dorchester, Hyde Park, and Mattapan that by no coincidence are home to many of our lowest income black and brown siblings. This is what we mean when we say environmental racism. And that is why I say that policy is my love language because if we can legislate hurt and harm and inequity, we can legislate health. We can legislate equity. We can legislate justice. And again, none of these injustices happened overnight. They're the result of generations of intentional policy violence and chronic disinvestment. We know that to combat decades of environmental racism, we must prioritize environmental justice, which is intrinsically linked to racial health and economic justice. Now is the time and I'm so glad this is our mayor to do that work, to advance bold policies and budgets that invest in our communities to undo decades of injustice and to affirm our fundamental right to drink clean water, to breathe clean air, and to live in clean and safe communities. Policies like the Green New Deal or the investments in the president's Build Back Better agenda, which we have not given up on, to be clear, and we are still fighting to deliver. So I am grateful for the opportunity to be here with all of you community leaders, with my partners in government at every level, uh, to ensure that we continue to work on behalf of our most vulnerable and marginalized communities. Uh, this is truly uh, an incredible uh, day in the neighborhood. Uh, so thank you again to all of our partners. And now um, I will turn it back to the administrator. All right, wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. As so many have been talking about, it takes partnership, it takes teams. And I mentioned that I've been five weeks at EPA, and oh my goodness, the staff at EPA Region 1. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Give it up. Brilliant. 
passionate, creative, innovative. It's just phenomenal. And I'd like to acknowledge those that are here today who've been working on this project in particular and on the public affairs and communication team. Doug Gutro, Natalie Burgo, Mandy Lau, Megan Cassidy, Emily Bender, Michaela Rump, and Kate Melanson. Woo! Give it up for a A-team. Thank Woo! you. We've been uh, talking about um, the Industrial Revolution here and, and what it's brought. And we know the legacy of pollution uh, that must be cleaned up. And today we're in the, in the midst of a different kind of revolution, driven by the finally firm understanding, although there are some that doubt it, that environmental protection and economic development go hand in hand. At the podium today, Congressman Lynch is our longest serving elected official here. And throughout his illustrious career, he has always been a supporter of labor, even and especially as we make environmental advances. With this listing of the Neponset as a Superfund site, millions and millions of dollars will be invested to bring environmental benefits to the surrounding neighborhoods, greater justice, as we just heard, to those who have borne the burden of pollution and a whole range of jobs to get the cleanup job done. And by the way, the jobs cleaning up and restoring the Neponset cannot be outsourced. Congressman Lynch. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. I know we have a couple of bike riders that have Do you want to get through? Are you, are you here for this or you want to get through? <laughs> Give it up for bike riders. <laughs> you know that Lee Toma and Jessica Mink were uh, leaders on this project. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next time through, we'll be swimming. All right. <laughs> Very good. Very good. The bicycle lobby is a very important lobby, so we <laughs> got to take care of them. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, good morning, and thank you all for being here. And to my colleagues in government, uh, this is a wonderful day. It has been a long day in coming, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, I think the earliest uh, work that was done on this project was in 1995. And it was then, it was uh, Representative Angelo Scasha. And I believe he had a, an excellent aide by the name of Rob Consalvo, who, who back in 95 was uh, working on this project. I know the first studies that we, we commissioned at the federal level were done in 2002. So I was only a year, year into office at that time. Uh, so you sometimes see how long things can take, but, but so worthwhile. Uh, and and the, the Neponset River community, and, and let me just say, EPA Region 1 is the best region yes. in the country. They, and, and look, uh, they have been at this long and hard. You know, the Neponset River, this is, this is a very, very important part, and it's heavily polluted, but that whole ecosystem from beginning in Quincy and, and Milton and into Boston, but then it goes further into Dedham, and, and uh, Norwood and Walpole in my district. And all of those communities are going to benefit greatly by the wonderful work that's going to be done here in cleaning up this heavily contaminated uh, part of the, of, of the system. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of linking together to com communities and, and, and impressing upon them how we rely on, on one another. And there is a, a, a heavy dose of environmental justice being delivered here today that has been a long time in coming. And I, I really do appreciate, you know, I sit on the uh, Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, so we, we did the drafting of, of all the legislation in the uh, Jobs and Infrastructure Act. And I am so thankful for, to the entire uh, Massachusetts delegation, the leadership by uh, Senator Warren, obviously, at the forefront, but also Senator Markey, who was keen on addressing the needs of formerly industrial areas of, of Massachusetts to make sure that we got these sites cleaned up. And uh, the, the, work, the work goes on, obviously, but that $3.5 billion will go a long way, not only here, but, but, but across the country as well, where other cities with a, a, a long-time industrial past uh, will feel the, the relief that we offer today. So uh, I'm very, very thankful. You know, I, I know uh, Senator Dosina Fori was recognized earlier. Uh, you know, I, in fairness, I got to recognize my predecessor, Joe Moakley, uh, as, as well. Uh, 
it was Ted Kennedy that was leading the way with Mike Capuano, uh, you know, back in, in 2000, 2005, that, uh, that, that really kept this going. So uh, many hands makes light work. Right. Uh, I really, really appreciate the advocacy from the Boston community, but also Milton and, and other areas that have been at the forefront of this, making sure that whoever the elected official was, this, this project uh, and this effort uh, was a priority for all of us. So, uh, and and I'm 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 certain that uh, under Mayor Wu's administration, that uh, she'll she'll keep faith with the hopes and dreams of of the neighbors and and uh, environmental activists that have taken uh, particular attention uh, to the success of this project. So, thank you very very much. Thank you, Congressman. We've got, oh, we've yeah. got a dog walk. Dogs coming through, <laughs> bikes coming through. In other oh. words, it's an active path. Exactly. Well, she won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We know that uh, this job is going to take many, many years. But I also want to make it clear, and this is particularly to you, Senator Warren, who uh, raised this issue as we were walking in, that EPA is committed to look for opportunities to take early cleanup actions as quickly as we possibly yes. can, taking advantage of this moment, especially when the environmental data show that contamination might represent a higher risk. Mayor Michelle Wu swept into office with a mandate to transform how cities approach interconnected areas of environment, justice, energy, housing, and transportation to create healthy, viable, livable communities. She's here today to celebrate how far we've come while acknowledging the work we have to do to protect and enhance this resource for the communities here. We're delighted to have you as a partner in City Hall as we move forward with this and many, many other initiatives. Mayor Wu. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Before I was mayor, before I was a city councilor, before I worked on Senator Warren's campaign, when I was in law school, I had the chance to work for a bit at Boston Medical Center. I was trying to understand the community resources available and met an incredible community leader who was running the food pantry there, Ms. Vivian Morris. <laughs> I got to spend some time with Ms. Morris in her, one of her many uh, hats that she was wearing, in her official work capacity at Boston Medical Center. She showed me around and told me a little bit about what she did every day, making sure that food access was central to the patients and the community served by BMC. And then she said, you know what, you should come and be part of a, uh, an event that we're hosting in the community. It was with the Mattapan Food and Fitness Coalition. Yeah. Shout out to Chevelle, yeah. uh, Executive Director. Yeah. And it was one of the very first, <laughs> one of the very first Mattapan on Wheels events, a bike ride through the neighborhood. Now I hadn't been on a bike in, I mean, the last bike I had had little pink streamers coming off the end. And so she took us down streets where I just, I was the sweat coming down, the, the, the hands gripped uh, to experience the need for better cycling infrastructure everywhere on our main roads. But the, the bike ride also came through this area. We rode through the park. We just had a, a, a bit of the tranquility of what you experience right now with the birds calling, with beautiful blue skies above. And it was clear that the aim was, of course, to get people moving, to think about health and wellness and your individual um, physical health from getting that exercise, but also to remind us when you're out on a bike, you're hearing everything, you're part of the community, that this was a treasure in our community that had been for so long overlooked. And so we are standing. I will uh, give us a little greater sense of place also um, in Mattapan, of course, at the Lower Neponset River, but also near Ryan Playground, which I think many, we all walk through, or many of us walk through to get here. A place that is full of life and laughter, especially as the weather gets warmer. A place that represents 
So much of what we are hoping our recovery from the pandemic will center, communities coming together, building, healing, and being in person together in nature, absorbing all of the, the be many benefits from being in this space. The park's location right along the Lo Lower Neponset River is part of what makes it so special and why it draws many of the families who come here to relax and reconnect with the natural beauty of our green spaces. But as you've heard, decades of industrial dumping have polluted this water and transformed something joyful and beautiful into something dangerous. And in the dozen years since my first bike ride here with Miss Morris and Chevelle and everyone, I have been alongside neighbors going out in canoes, trying to do their part to clean up the river, pulling bikes, bike wheels <laughs> and other things out of the river, uh, trying to get the litter out. I've been alongside neighbors in community meetings year after year after year discussing what potential there is here, what a treasure we need to just put a little bit of investment into for the community. Well, the, the neighbors and the community have done their part for many, many years. And I'm so excited that now the public sector and our federal government and state and city, of course, will continue to be a full partner in that and being able to truly restore and invest in this. The chemicals in this river can have serious impacts on physical health, on reproductive health, and affect our young people's cognitive development and learning. And communities that benefit most from this are the very communities that, that stand to benefit the most from our investments here are the communities that have been historically targeted for disinvestment as part of racist policies like redlining for decades. While a few companies profited, our neighborhoods were polluted and our residents paid the price with their health. Dangerous chemicals do not belong in our water. They do not belong in our communities. And I want to thank all of the organizers and activists who refuse to give up all of the community leaders and elected officials passing the torch term after term after term, generation after generation to get us to this point. I am so excited and honored to be stepping in at this moment, to, at the moment of action. And so thank you to the EPA for declaring the Lower Neponset River a Superfund site. With this support alongside MassDEP, we will seize on every bit of resource and opportunity to restore this river and return it to our residents as a treasure that it is. This will not only begin the long overdue process of undoing decades of damage, but also bring us closer to the, our goal and our focus of making Boston a Green New Deal city. Cleaning this river is part of the broader work we are doing to invest in and support the neighborhood of Mattapan, of Hyde Park, of Dorchester, of the, the many visitors and residents and guests who, who pass through, from increasing air quality by expanding transit accessibility, to investing in preserving and creating affordable housing because clean water, clean air, and safe, stable housing are basic human rights that our residents shouldn't have to fight for. And so in this moment, we are seizing on the urgency of what, what's in front of us and what we need to do. I'm so honored and grateful to be in this fight with all of you all and to see it now headed into the next phase. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Wu. We know that municipalities are always partners working together to solve these kind of problem today problems. And also joining us today is the chair of the select board from Milton, Kathleen Conlin. As I said earlier, upstream from us, the river crosses town borders into Milton, and Milton has been a steadfast supporter of our efforts on the Neponset. We're thrilled to have their continued support as we get ready to embark on environmental investigation and cleanup. Chair Conlon. Thank you. Thank you very much to Regional Administrator David Cash and our Senator Warren, Congresswoman Presley, and Congressman Lynch, um, and all of our elected officials who are here today. Um, on behalf of the Milton Select Board and the Milton Conservation Commission, a couple of our members are here today. My colleague Arthur Doyle, who's the vice chair of our board and also a member of the Conservation Commission. My other colleague Richard Wells. And unfortunately, Melinda Collins and Michael Zulis could not join us today. But we all send our congratulations and our thanks to the federal delegation and to the, the United States Environmental Protection Agency. I also want to acknowledge John Kiernan, who's the chair of the Milton Conservation Commission, who's also been a longtime advocate, and Lee Toma, a resident of Milton, who 
is involved in all things outdoors. The, the town of Milton is enthusiastic to endorse the EPA's designation of the Lower Neponset River as a Superfund site. Many of you know, and as prior, prior speakers have said, this, the river crosses through multiple communities, and we're happy to be a partner with Boston and Mayor Wu and her team uh, on this wonderful project. In the Lower Mills area, many former mill buildings have been transformed into housing and mixed-use development and have been a part of a long-running revitalization of the area. And this is one more step in the process that follows along this wonderful bike path that members of Boston, uh, residents of Boston, residents of Milton enjoy. The Neponset River is one of our oldest waterways. It's an historic waterway, one of our oldest industrial waterways. But sadly, it has suffered from generations of pollution caused by manufacturing and mill operations. The cleanup of the river will officially restore a healthy natural habitat for our wildlife and will also increase recreational opportunities for the public. We look forward to working with Mayor Michelle Wu of Boston and her team on this very important environmental project. And on behalf of the Milton Select Board and the Conservation Commission, our thanks to all of the EPA members and our Senator and Representatives for their commitment to restoring the Neponset River. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Conlon. Thank you. We also know, of course, that there are always state partners that we are working with, working with, and I just want to acknowledge again, as I have, you can't acknowledge them too many times, Senator Nick Collins, Representative Rob Casalvo, and of course, former Senator Dorsina Fori. Thank you so much for all that you work. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Reverend Oh, hot. Thank you so much. I didn't, I hadn't. The, uh, the Lower Neponset River site was referred to us as has to happen under the Superfund statute by Governor Baker and the Commonwealth in 2015. Thank you to the Commonwealth for your support and partnership, and that's for the legislature and for the executive branch during the Superfund listing process. The Department of Environmental Protection is a true partner for EPA, and without their help, we wouldn't be here today. I also want to acknowledge DCR. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the, the, permit, the permit for this event today, uh, they, they conditioned perfect weather for it. So thank you very much. And I also want to say I, I walked in past, thank you, I, I walked in past a, a group of DCR staff. You could see them over there. And I said hello to them and um, told them what we were doing today. And their response was, it's about time. They're so excited as those who protect our state parks and lands. Uh, we really appreciate working with DCR, so thank you very much. Um, I also want to uh, acknowledge today our next, uh, our next speaker, uh, who is uh, Paul Locke, Deputy Commissioner, works for the Mass DEP, who will uh, give us some words representing the Commonwealth and the executive agencies. Thank you, Paul. Uh, on behalf of the, the Governor Baker, or, I'm sorry, my voice is. <laughs> yeah, a little, bit, a little bit of a frog. The, the wildlife will be coming back. Uh, on behalf of Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito, uh, Secretary Theor oh, I can never pronounce her name. Sorry, Theorides, <laughs> and in my boss, uh, Commissioner Suberg from Mass DEP. <clears throat> I'd like to. Uh, thank EPA uh, for this next step in what has been a very long trip for, for Mass DEP and the, the residents and citizens of Boston. I'm going to keep this short because I'm losing my voice. Uh, this is, as everybody has said, this is a first step uh, towards the completion of this project, but a lot of you and a lot of us have been working on this for several decades, as you have heard. Uh, personally, I've gone... My history with this goes back almost 20 years <clears throat> to a citizens' advisory committee <clears throat> to a citizens advisory committee that um, I participated in with Ian and many other people here. And <clears throat> one of the striking things that I remember from that work, the first sessions that we met together, 
of the representatives of 23 local organizations up and down the river got together and we began by talking about what the river meant to them, to us, their relationship with it, and how they envisioned it changing. And what really struck, struck me and has stuck with me over the years is the descriptions of the river as something that people avoided in the past, where people had turned their backs on the river, both figuratively and literally, where buildings would be built facing away from the river because of the pollution, the contamination, and it was not playing a role in everybody's lives. And the vision that people had would be to be able to redirect our energies, our recreational opportunities back to the river and appreciate it and use it as a resource that it should be. That was over 20 years ago. There's been a lot of work by DEP staff, EPA staff, and the community at large, both very public and behind the scenes to get us to the point where we are today. And I'd like to thank particularly the community for your patience, your understanding, and your continuing efforts to get this done and providing the support to the regulators, to DEP, to EPA, to DCR, and to the legislative communities, the elected officials, to help us get to this point. It almost feels like this is a conclusion of one phase of the work. The rest uh, will still require some patience as we work through the assessment and the cleanup of the, the river. But in the end, we'll be able to turn back around and face the river and use it. And it will be a, an incredible resource for everybody. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. EPA, EPA knows that our next step is to really understand what's going on with the is Congresswoman Presley leaving? She has stepped Of course, give it up. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I just want to yeah. point out how the, how the mayor has been cleaning up after the EPA director here. She's relentless. She's relentless. And I'm very proud of her. Just want for the record. No litter. Uh -huh. Like I said, we all need partners in this cleanup. Oh, goodness. So EPA's next job is to really understand what's going on with the contamination in the river. But, of course, we know it's the folks on the ground who live here, whose knowledge and understanding of this beautiful place goes well beyond parts per billion or pH levels. And we're looking forward to continued partnership with Ian Cook and the Neponset River Watershed Association, a grassroots member-supported conservation group working since 1967 to clean up and protect the Neponset River. Ian Cook is a tireless advocate for the river, and he joins us today together, and we look forward to working with you. Ian? Hi. Our, our urban rivers should, um, should be a resource that brings us together, that allows everyone in society to get outside, enjoy nature, get exercise, and meet our neighbors and, and really build our civic society. And the Neponset in the last 20 plus years has already been transformed. You know, if you had come here 20 years ago, you probably would have needed wire cutters to get to this spot, to get over the barbed wire chain link fence. And today we have a beautiful greenway along the river that gets incredible use and brings together people from all kinds of walks of life. And the reason for that has been an extraordinary coalition of individuals, political leaders, bureaucrats, uh, community organizations who have worked together for many, many, many years to, uh, to accomplish what's occurred so far and really for the last 20 years to push forward on this issue of contaminated sediments. Groups, neighborhood associations, groups like the Neponset Greenway Council. Um, <laughs> and today we, we have a beautiful river, but the river itself is polluted. And we're extremely excited to have EPA here to help begin moving that process of cleaning up the river itself forward much more rapidly than has ever been the case. 
I think one great consequence of uh, the coalition work that has happened along the Neponset over the last many years is that there were something like 85 public comments when the Neponset River was nominated for Superfund status. And every single one of those was in favor of the nomination, which is virtually unheard of in the yeah. Superfund process. The other thing I want to say is just, just to remember that those citizens and volunteers have been actively working on this PCB issue for 20 years. So although this is a critical beginning, it's, it's also uh, something that uh, has been going on for a long time. And I know my organization and many others, and, and I'm glad to hear other leaders on the stage saying this this morning, are all going to work to try to make this a cleanup that uh, takes years rather than decades. And, and the last thing I want to say is just to remind folks that the thing that is polluted here is the river itself. It's the mud in the river. It's the fish in the river. You know, if you are somebody who recreates along the Neponset River now, you should still do that. You can come. You can take a walk along the bike path. You can ride your bike along the bike path. You can go fishing. Don't eat the fish, definitely. <laughs> Stay out of the mud. You can go for a paddle. Just don't get in the mud. You should still enjoy the river. Uh, you know, the super fun name can be intimidating, I think, but it's, it's still an important recreational resource, and hopefully in the next few years it will both be healthy for people and for wildlife and will really have the kind of urban river these neighborhoods need and deserve. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Ian. I, I want to reiterate one of the things uh, Ian just said. One of, one of the remarkable aspects ab about this site um, and the path that we've taken to listing has been the unanimity of support. Now, for those of you who are not in government, to get unanimity for something like this is so extraordinarily rare. And so it's a real testament to the community groups, the, ac the activists, the state, uh, agencies, the legislatures, the municipal staff, it's just been remarkable. All of these community members have been terrific to work with, to learn from, and we know we must continue to ground our work, the work going forward, in the perspectives from the communities surrounding the Neponset, and we look forward to that partnership. And one of the phenomenal community leaders who's paved the way for better community health and better access to the recreational possibilities of the river is Vivian Morris. Chairperson, Chairperson of the Edgewater Neighborhood Association, thank you so much for being with us today, Chairperson Morris. Welcome. So, uh, thank you all. I'd like to give a deep thanks to all who have worked hard to get the resources made available to ensure the cleanup of our lovely Neponset River the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, NEPRA, our wonderful Mayor Wu, uh, the town of Milton, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Congressman St Stephen Lynch, and also our neighboring Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, and of course the EPA. I'm chairperson of the Edgewater Neighborhood Association and a resident of the Edgewater Neighborhood a neighborhood that we call Edgewater because it lies directly adjacent to the Neponset River. My neighbors and I founded the Edgewater Neighborhood Association so that we could be stronger supporters of each other and advocates for improvements in our broader community. We are so fortunate to have each other. I'd like to give a shout out to our vice chairperson, Jesse Danverville who is also coordinating our food forest project. And please keep the date of May 7th on your agenda as the opening of the Edgewater Food Forest at River Street. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to also give a shout out to Larray Bryson, who's the coordinator of our community efforts to engage neighbors in projects to improve access to the Neponset River. So from the beginning, we've worked closely with Mattapan Food and Fitness Coalition, uh, an organization, of course, that is part of my heart. 
And it's another organization that's been a strong advocate for the health and well-being of community residents. We know that the Neponset River is a wonderful asset for our community and many others. Having the opportunity to safely walk along the river, enjoy nature, and when the water is fully cleaned, to also be able to swim and eat the fish <laughs> from the waters, all of these things will have those positive health benefits that we have been advocating for and working with all of you for for many years. I'd also like to gratefully recognize other Mattapan and beyond organizations that have worked alongside us throughout the years on these health and environmental projects. Mattapan Community Health Center, the Greater Mattapan Neighborhood Council, the Bell Nell Family Neighborhood Association, River Street Neighborhood Association, Trust for Public Land, Neponset River Greenway Council, Neponset River Watershed Association, and I want to give another special shout out to our state representative, Brandy Fluker Oakley, who has been working constantly with us since her election. And a special thank you to the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation that's working with us to make even safer access along the Neponset River in our neighborhood. So we can only imagine how with the upcoming river cleanup that all residents will be even more excited to engage with the lovely Neponset River. Thank you to the EPA. Oh, absolutely. Oh, wonderful. Wanted to, uh, to, to thank the National Park Service uh, as well, who's one of our federal partners. Of course. And I know that uh, Jim Cantwell is here from Senator Markey's staff. So thank you very much. Come on. Come on through. Oh, you're listening. OK. Oh, okay. It's wonderful. <laughs> Well, now's the time to, to close up. And I just want to close by thanking the incredible community that we have here. Community in its broadest sense, from the people who live here, the elected officials, their staff, the agencies at the state, at the municipal, at the federal level, just a remarkable group of people all working together to create the beauty that we see behind us, but in a way that's safe, and provides a wonderful resource for all of the families and communities in Boston and Milton and around here. So thank you very much, everybody. We, we look forward to working on this together. And now we're happy to open uh, to questions for the media. I'd ask at the beginning that we focus on the Neponset River. I know there's a lot going on in the world right now that raises lots of questions and concerns. But at least for the beginning, we're happy to take questions on what we've been talking about. Yeah, so that's a really good question. We know what has to happen first is to us to get a really good understanding of the extent of the contamination. We can't take any uh, uh, projections about how long it will take. We know that this is a high priority for us, for us at EPA generally. That's why it's on the list. And we know for Region 1, it's a really high priority. It's where we're really going to focus our efforts to get the initial investigation off the ground so we can make the kind of changes that you're talking about as quickly as we possibly can. Down. I'm assuming the dredging or some kind of big mm -hmm. projects involved. <clears throat> How will that affect the current users of, of the river? Will, should people yep. anticipate maybe some disruptions? Yeah, that's questions? a that's a great question. And of course, given the partnerships that we have, we're going to keep communication about what all of our steps are. So when there will be, and we're going to try to minimize those kind of disruptions, but when there are, we'll work hand in hand with, the, with our community partners to figure out how to make them happen quickly and communicate when they're happening so people don't get concerned. You know, sometimes people can see a, you know, a, a, an earth mover here and they get concerns and questions, and we're going to try to be as transparent about that. Is this the kind of situation where you won't know what it is till you get into it? We, we have some idea of what's there, given the analysis that you've heard for 20 plus years that's gone on. We don't know where and we don't know the extent, and that's primarily what we're going to be finding. Of course, we'll be looking out for things that might surprise us as well. And I don't know if this is a 
Um, is there any danger to the community when you start lifting stuff out? So, first of all, not a dumb question at all. It's a great no, question. <laughs> Uh, definitely not a dumb question. Again, as I answered before, anytime there's going to be a disruption that we think might add a risk, we're going to be very communicative about it, and we're going to try to mitigate that risk as much as we possibly can. With the coming in, let's, let's go over here and I'll come back. With the federal resources coming in, what role will the community groups continue to have uh, in the process? Well, it, it will allow us to amp up those roles, amp up the, the, the partnerships um, that we're able to do already. That's what part of this funding goes for. It's not just for dredging machines, it's for the process. We know that solving a problem like this is really process focused, and resources will go to that. I'm sorry, over here? Real quickly, fish regenerate, obviously. Uh, are you going to have to wipe out the current generation, start fresh, and restock it? How's that going? So I'm definitely not a fish biologist, so I'm not even going to try to answer that question, and I don't know if we have someone here who can? No. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the question was, will we have to wipe out the current fish population so that a new healthy population will take its place down the line? This is Megan Cassidy, one of our experts on the Superfund site here. Megan, why don't you come up? Sure. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Emily. Um, no, we wouldn't expect that that would have to happen. Again, you know, um, the fish population, we do know some of the fish are contaminated. There are current, you know, warnings for consumption. Uh, but again, over time, when you clean up a, a river environment, the sediments, you start to slowly see that uh, improvement in the fish. So that would likely be the situation. We would very rarely sort of, you know, wipe out a population um, to, to replace so that would just be one of the long-term benefits here. Yeah. The fish will be glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Lynn, you, you mentioned a figure earlier that's being shared nationally. Um, as far as Massachusetts piece of that, do you think there's enough in there to cover what work is going to need to be done here, or will we need more money after that? Uh, well, there's $3.5 billion specifically uh, for uh, rehabilitating sites like this, but also uh, through the good work of uh, Senator Warren and, and Senator Markey and the House delegation, uh, we did give the states uh, 12.5 billion. Uh, that is really discretionary. So if if the state uh, were to allocate additional monies as well, that that would help the whole process. There is a matching requirement on a lot of this money that. The feds come in and, and pick up 90 or 80 percent of the cost, and then the state has to pick up the remaining 10 or 20. So it'll be a real cooperation between uh, our state and, and federal and municipal officials as well. And, and if I can just add to the congressman's point, this is not one and done funding. We have super fun sites all across the Commonwealth and all across the nation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they are all underfunded. We are worried about what's in those sites. We're so lucky to be starting this one. It's been a lot of hard work and a lot of investment. We know we have the money to get this one done, but we will continue to try to keep more and more resources into the Superfund project overall. That is a part of what was in the most recent legislation was to get ongoing funding because as much, yes, the excise tax, as much as we are delighted to be here today, we need to keep up public pressure to clean up every super fun site in this country. Yeah. Question in the back. I want to praise you all for the work that you're doing and the speed that you're anticipating doing it. But I want to talk about transparency too. The neighbors have invested lots of time and it's really important that we know what you're doing, where you're doing it, how you're doing it, and most importantly, who's doing it. Mm -hmm. I would support and recommend that we try to get as many neighborhood residents mm -hmm. involved in this process because we have an unemployment problem in this neck of the woods. So yeah. Those are my two points. Great. Thank you very much. And those are exactly in line with how we plan on proceeding. Transparency, open engagement with the communities around us, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, a couple more questions. Any more on topic? Or? Are we keeping the media questions? Or just me media questions at this point. Thanks. Can I ask the two members of Congress um, who are still remaining, 
Um, if there are no more on-topic questions, uh, the President of Ukraine is uh, planning to address Congress on Wednesday. Uh, can I ask the two of you your thoughts, what you are hoping to hear, what you're expecting to you want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I, I think it's a, a, a question of uh, how much slaughter and how much uh, <clears throat> violence against civilians in Ukraine that the world community will tolerate. Uh, and I understand, <clears throat> I understand that, that Ukraine is not part of NATO, but they are part of the human race, and there is a, a wider and deeper obligation that we have uh, to protect innocent children and families. So uh, we're grappling with that. I know, uh, I know the administration is, is trying feverishly to get as many resources as we possibly can uh, to the Ukrainian forces on the ground uh, without putting U.S. boots on the ground. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the difficulty. But um, I, I do give great credit to President Biden for his ability to pull together the 30 countries of NATO, as well as other countries, to increase the level of sanctions and, and widen the scope of those sanctions uh, turning up the heat on on uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, but again, uh, things are growing worse by the hour uh, in Ukraine, and and there's an ultimate uh, point at which I think, either under the UN banner or the NATO banner, uh, the free world will be forced to respond. I, I expect that President Zelensky will drive home in a very personal way what it means that Vladimir Putin is willing to commit war crimes out in full public view. Um, he will undoubtedly talk about what that means to his people and yet the spirit of how they fight on. I also expect he will make the case for the military and humanitarian aid that he needs. And we will be there. Uh, to hear and to try to get as much help as possible. As you know, the omnibus bill that passed Congress last week put about $15 billion at the disposal of Ukraine, both for humanitarian and military assistance. And if more help is needed, then I'm sure he will make that case to us. Well, we have to remember that for the first time, the United States is trying a different approach with our allies to an invasion of a country that could easily, uh, an invasion that could escalate into full-scale world war. We are trying to use an economic response. We're trying to help the Ukrainians with a military defense, but we're trying to use an economic response that is sufficiently painful to Vladimir Putin personally to the Russian government and to the Russian oligarchs that support Vladimir Putin, sufficiently painful that Vladimir Putin will back up, that he will decide that, that continuing to impose this kind of pain on Ukraine is not worth what it is doing to the economy in Russia and what it is doing to Russia's um, uh, interaction with the rest of the world. Uh, we have taken historic steps, and I give full credit to President Biden, who has worked with our allies so that the economic sanctions, for the first time ever, involve countries all around the world and have cut Russia off from the formal banking system. This is extraordinary. Nothing like this has happened before. American companies and other European companies are following up. As you know, McDonald's is pulling out. MasterCard and Visa have said no more. Um, I think it's important that we also plug another hole in the bucket, and that is to make sure that the Russian oligarchs and the Russian government don't have the opportunity to move to crypto as a way to be able to continue financial transactions or to hide money. We have to keep in mind that Russia, uh, had, right now, uh, three-quarters of all of the ransomware attacks come through Russia. So they're good at being able to uh, hide money, 
uh, and use uh, illicit activities for helping support the economics of the country. Um, this is a real problem. North Korea and uh, uh, has already uh, been using crypto, for example, in order to evade Russia, uh, in order to evade economic sanctions around the world. So we've still got a lot of work to do. We're going to continue to work on it and uh, continue to support Ukraine on both a, a military and a humanitarian level. That's all the time we have for today, guys. Uh, I answered so long. Sorry. No, thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. So good to see you. Wow. So fun. So glad to be here. Thank you. Thank so glad. Thank you. I got to run. Oh, oh, see you later. Yeah, Bye. Me too. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much for having me. Oh, this is great. Good.